just trying to go through here and there's a lot of controversy from a lot of people in raising tarantulas on temperatures, humidities, and everything else like that. Uh, about a month ago, I had a P. Metallica that was a little baby sling I ordered from Paul and it had got stuck in a molt and couldn't do anything about it. So I called him and he told me this idea about a microclimate. So I've made one already, I'm making a second one today. And uh, I just want to kind of show everybody how to make one. And uh, I mean, I, I, I've been using it, all my little baby slings and little tees or whatnot are growing up a lot faster, they're molting more. So uh, I'm gonna kind of show you guys how to make one today and uh, let you kind of decide whether or not you want to raise your temperatures and keep your humidities up for all your little slings that you get in. It's kind of easy, really quick. And uh, here's some things that you'll need. First thing, we got a temperature gauge. We got a hygrometer for uh, humidity. It's good to have these in there because sometimes with the, the heating pad here that we put on the back of them, the heating pad will get kind of hot inside of there. Like the first one I made, I had styrofoam sides for it all and the top. And I actually had to remove two of the sides because it was getting too hot in there. And you don't want it to be really above 85 I mean mine run about 87 right now which is I mean give or take it's all right so basically what I did get you all started off I went and bought a cage at PetSmart 10 gallon aquarium inside of the aquarium here let me show, show you all. I bought a little stand at Walmart it's a wide pulling stacking shelf and that's just because you're going to want to stack a bunch of little slings in there so you want it to be able to stand up. So I'm going to remove the paper and everything from here. I'm going to get this out of there. And it's a good little shelf to use and have for your aquariums. Whenever you're putting like 15 to 20 slings in there. And I mean, it, it, I've been using this and it's been awesome for me. It's been working out really good. Everything's been growing up a lot a lot faster than what I've seen whenever they're out of the the microclimate that I built for them. I got this under tank heater. We're actually going to put this on the back side of the tank here and these are awesome and they're actually they seem really expensive but I got mine on Amazon for twenty dollars. I mean they sell them pets like uh, PetSmart or Petco and they sell them for like fifty bucks. So if I would get one I would go on Amazon and get one and it's a really good deal on there. Like I said, some people would prefer to put them under, but I put them on the back side. And I'll put my styrofoam on the back side as well to keep kind of trap the humidity forward. Uh, the really back side of your cage that you put it on though is going to be really hot. So you don't want to put any of your slings or your tees on there too close to it because I'm sure that's like a heat zone for it. A lot of people talk about heating mats and lights and stuff like that, like trapping too much heat close by the tarantula in certain areas. So I only really use the front half of my microclimate. I don't put anything beyond the halfway point. But I mean, if you get a smaller heat mat, there's a chance that that could work out for you where you don't have to keep them so far inward in the tank so that they don't get so close to the heat mats where they're too hot. I'm gonna get into this right here. Get everything opened up here. I mean, all this is really easy, real quick. I mean, the... The shelf in there that I bought was six bucks. The tank you can get for, I mean, the, just tank prices vary between a lot of people. I spent 40 bucks on mine, but I just wanted a good tank to use. And this heat mat was 20 bucks. And these go for about 10. So I mean, all together, 40, 60, about 70, 80 dollars all together to make this microclimate. But I mean, all your tees, your slings and everything, they grow up so much faster. All right. So this is going to be the top styrofoam. I bought the styrofoam at Home Depot. They had sheets like this. They weren't too thick, but I mean they were just the right size for what I need. You have to cut it to what you need it for. So I'm going to put this one on the top. Uh, I've been fine not cutting any air holes. As you see, everything's just fine. Nothing cut into it or anything like that. You just lay it on the top of there and I mean they have no problem still getting air through that, which I find. Like at first I was a little worried about it, but everything works great and this is going to go on the back side 
like so. You can see that. And uh, it's perfectly fit. I mean, I cut it all out just right for this. So everything's going to be great there. And uh, we're going to put the heating mat inside of there. I run all my stuff on a regular bookshelf. So we're going to peel this off. I'm going to call this the front and this the back. It means that's the front. I want the cord to go. I don't know how many chances you get with this heating mat, but... I don't really want anything in between it. I'm going to go a little bit lower with this one. inside of it because that's just where my other one's at and it's easier to look through with the flashlight because the front of the, you're gonna build a lot of moisture on the front of your cage here and that's I mean that's just kind of really good I mean another reason why I like this is because the little slings when they're in their little containers a lot of moisture builds inside of their containers too so there's always a lot of people worry about how they're gonna drink and everything else like that but there's always little droplets formed around the uh, the enclosures that they're in and plastic works a lot better than any glass that you might use so stick this I like to do it about midway I put the hygrometer on the left we'll put the thermometer on the right because that's closer to the heat the heat mat on the back there and I mean you always want to make sure that you never get your teeth too hot that's a big deal uh, keeping the temperature up is good and I mean I always just I only do this for my slings my little my little tees my slings anything that you know I mean is really vulnerable to molts because I mean most of my molting tees that I ever have any problems I've ever had they've always been little slings under an inch an inch and a half maybe two inches even so we got the heat mat we got our stand in there a little shelf or whatnot. We got our temperature gauge and our hygrometer in there on the left side. And so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to add, you want to make sure you have some substrate in here, some really good substrate that holds moisture really well. And so I use cocoa fiber or eco earth is what a lot of people get, the coconut fibers. And that, that's always been really good for me because it holds a lot of moisture in. It doesn't really mold very much. So, sorry about that. I've already gotten all this prepared for us. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in there. I'm gonna try to, try to spread it all around, make an even platform for it all. And this just makes for certain humidity. Make sure you keep all this moist, you know what I mean? And going good. And try to get it all spread out as good as possible in here. Not too much on the shelf, you know. So that you can leave stuff in here. There we go. I might be able to put a little bit more in later. This is all I prepared for this though, so. But this, you know, keeping this moistened and set up like this when it's really wet, whenever the heat from the heat mat pulls in, all the moisture is going to rise in the air. And that's going to make sure that all your teas 
have a good accurate molt for you okay so we don't have a lot of time left on here but uh we're gonna put this lid on i'm gonna set the lid on here like so and so as you can see like on the inside here let me peel this off this is a good start to a good microclimate in there and you can see where you can stack a bunch of your little spiderlings or quarter inch I mean I've, I've put everything in here from a quarter inch to an inch and a half so far in this and I got another one over here I'll show you before I get off of here but uh I never really glue this to the back side of it and I make sure to cut out room you see where that little lip is on that I'll cut that off of this just to be sure because I don't want it to not be I don't want it to be so spacious behind there so we'll go ahead and we'll cut that out really quick. Let me see if I can get this turned around. Let me set this up here. So this is going to be sitting about right here. So I'll cut into this just about right there. And we'll cut into it about right there. And I'll just cut it out of there. should give it room to breathe there because you don't really want to cover up this corded area that's where it gets really hot on there I don't know if you can see very well because I'm kind of going off of just judgment on the camera here but I just do it like that and I'll actually push this against the shelf so I don't have to glue it on there and I'll put the top on if you give me a second here I'll turn this around And that right there keeps all, you see all the humidity building already on the front of that? And that makes a perfect microclimate. My temperatures, like I said, will always stay at about 85. I mean, yeah, my temperature stays at 85, my humidity stays around 70. I'll come over here, I'm gonna show you my uh, other eco-climate that I've built, microclimate. That's right there. A little dark in here. And I got a bunch of slings in there right now, so they're all doing much better than they were whenever I didn't have them in there. And there's my top piece. I just got a screen lid on there. But that's it. My, that's my uh, little tutorial there on how to make a microclimate. I hope you all enjoyed it uh, and learned something from it. Like I said, it, everyone varies on whether they need temperatures and humidities uh, on, their, on their teas or whatnot. Uh, again, for me, my main point is for most of my slings, this is how I want to raise them until they're a little bigger. After they, they get to a decent size, I'm really not too worried about them. But uh, I haven't had any fatalities in, in any microclimates that I've built so far. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to rehouse and put a bunch of new teas that I got that are growing a little bit bigger from the little ones I got in the other microclimate and some bigger containers that I have. And uh, after that, they'll probably be ready to go in the normal cages and on normal shelves. All right, well, that's all I got. I hope you all uh, learned something from this, and uh, I highly recommend a microclimate.